Good evening. Welcome to the August 14th, 2017 meeting of the Rutherford County Regional Planning Commission. If you would stand with us, please. Commissioner Craig Lynch will lead us in our prayer and our pledge. Craig. Thank you. You may be seated. Call the roll, please, Gail. Rhonda Allen. Here. Jim Averwater. Here. Lee Bogle. Here. David Jones. Here. Mike Cush. Present. Craig Lynch. Here. Chip Pinion. Here. Charlotte P. Here. Mike Vaught. Here. Jeff Phillips. Present. We have a question. Thank you, Gail. We need to approve the minutes or read and approve the minutes of our uh, April the 10th and July 10th uh, Planning Commission meeting. I'll call on our Vice Chair, Mike Cush. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I have reviewed those minutes, uh, both sets, have approved those, so I'd submit those to the archives for approval. I have a motion and a second to approve the minutes of April 10th and July 10th. All those in favor of that motion, please say aye. That motion carries. Uh, a quick an announcement. Uh, as you know, at this 6 o'clock meeting last uh, month, long-term planning commissioner and county commissioner, uh, Will Jordan, uh, resigned. Uh, the staff has put together a, a, a plaque recognizing his service. And on behalf of the planning commission, that plaque will be presented to Will Thursday night uh, before the community and the full uh, county commission. Uh, speaking of Will, uh, we have Pettis Reed out in the audience. Pettis, you stand up and uh, Pettis will take uh, Will's place on the planning commission and he will be installed this Thursday night also uh, before the full uh, planning uh, county commission. Welcome back, Pettis. Okay, uh, any items uh, been withdrawn or deferred? No, sir, we have a full slate tonight. We're ready to go. Uh, item six is new business. 6A is uh, public hearings that are scheduled, uh, re rezoning requests that are scheduled for public hearings. 6A1, the item number is 17-A019, Class Family Revocable Living Trust by David Glass. The location is 1527 Compton Road. Uh, commission district is two. The county commissioner is Steve Piercy. The size of the site is approximately three acres. Tax map 68. Existing zoning is RM, residential medium density. Proposed zoning is CS, commercial services. Doug. Yes, Mr. Chairman, thank you and good evening, commission members. Uh, the applicant is proposing, as, uh, as Mr. Chairman stated, to uh, zone this property to commercial services. Uh, they don't have necessarily specific plans, but they did mention in their application that they have one of three possibilities. First being a classic car restoration business. Uh, motor vehicle repair establishments do fall under the automotive repair and servicing activity classification, which are allowed by right in the commercial services zone. The applicant has included a basic concept plan, which you can see on your agenda packets, which are on your iPads, but it's nothing that, it's really just a couple of uh, locations for possible buildings, nothing really that uh, the 
applicant would be bound by, by any means. A uh, second possibility may be many warehouses, which are classified as general personal services. Again, they are allowed in a commercial zone, but specifically many warehouses, self-storage facilities are only allowed by special exception uh, to the Board of Zoning Appeals, so they're not a use by right. The other uh, possibility would be just for speculative purposes, and of course any development would have to adhere to the requirements of the zoning ordinance should that be the case. Uh, as you can see from the GIS map, uh, Mike has the uh, site highlighted, you can see that there is existing commercial zoning not too far from the property to the east, roughly about 700 feet. Uh, there's also across the street and just a little to the south, I guess that's the southeast, you see there's an existing uh, electric substation there on the property. It is zoned for residential purposes, but uh, the use of the property has been that way for, for some time. Plus, a little further at the corner there, again, you can see some uh, additional commercial zoning on the property as well. Uh, access, parking, landscaping, performance standards, all of those, if this were approved, would have to meet the requirements of the zoning ordinance. Of course, if this were to be approved, any new development would have to be done through a site plan, engineered site plan which would have to be brought back to the Planning Commission for their review and approval. Uh, this property is located within a general urban character area which does contemplate non-residential uses. Compton Road is a heavily traveled arterial road and eventually will be five laned at some point in the future. No concrete plans for that now. Of course uh, that's something uh, I believe that being a state route would also have to have uh, state funding as well. Uh, but again there are commercially zoned properties located in close proximity to this site as well as an electric substation. Uh, concerning these factors, staff did recommend approval of the request. Uh, we did receive some phone calls regarding this. Uh, I know that there are some in the community that have some concerns about this request. Some of them may be here tonight to speak. Uh, with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Any questions for staff at this time? Not yet. We'll get to you, okay? Any, any questions for staff? If not, are we ready for our public hearing? Any, any sinkholes located on the property or located on the adjacent property? I believe there's a, no, I believe there's a little bit of a draw that goes through the middle of the property, but there's a little bit of a hill here and right at Betty Ford, there's a little bit of a crest of a hill as well. No streams that I could see, no uh, wetlands, and I think it was out of the flood zone as well. Probably won't affect it. I'm just curious, is the cemetery full or is it, they still accept burials there? Do you not, does anyone not? I'm not sure if that's still accepting interments or not. I will declare a public hearing open for 17-A019. It might be appropriate if uh, someone representing the applicant is here uh, to speak and kind of let us know what they have in mind. Is someone, the applicant or someone representing the applicant here? If you'd come forward, please. 17 State your name and address for the record. My name is David Glass. We uh, purchased the property about six months ago. Um, we didn't really know what we were gonna do with the property. But as we got into it, the home that's on the property is in very bad condition, and it's uh, the foundation is all messed up. So we were looking at other options, spoke with uh, quite a few people, uh, and determined that probably the best use of this property is a commercial service type uh, use, which would allow a lot of different things that would be beneficial to the community. Uh, one that's not been mentioned is the possibility of a nursery. So um, <clears throat> I don't know if there's any questions for me in particular, but we're basically just trying to figure out the best use of the property. The home will probably be uh, destroyed or moved away. Um, either way on how this meeting goes tonight, but uh, we're hoping to be able to use the property in a way that actually benefits the community. Any questions for Mr. Glass? Thank you. 
Now, anyone else wishing to speak, please come forward. If you would come around and speak into the microphone, please, Ms. Eldred. Okay. Um, did I hear him say that this could be a nursery? Did I? Did he say that? He mentioned. Okay, but I, that's not allowed on here. Mentioned that. That's not allowed on here. It says no. Okay, well, hold on. Doug, could you give a list of possibilities in in the? Yes. If you just bear with me a second. If that, if that doesn't break protocol. It's on the back side. Depending on the type of nursery that he's yeah, talking about, if he's know, talking about like a retail, just, right? I, I understand. I understand. I'm going to look at a couple of things here. Nursery retail nurseries would be classified as a general retail trade, which would be allowed in that zone. Wholesale nurseries are plant and forest. They fall under plant and forest nurseries. And as you have stated correctly, uh, that would not be permitted. But if it's a retail nursery, he could do that. Uh, now, to answer uh, Mr. Vaught's question as far as uh, different uses that are allowed, of course, the uh, zoning ordinance, and of course you have a copy of Appendix B, uh, there's a, a wide range. This is not the most, uh, this is not the least restrictive of the commercial zones. We have three commercial zones. Of the three, this one's kind of in the middle. Uh, commercial neighborhood is the most restrictive, commercial uh, general being the least restrictive. Uh, but it allows for a variety of activities, uh, animal care, veterinarian, uh, automotive repair and servicing, as we've discussed, general personal services, again, as we discussed, uh, consumer repair services, construction sales and service, uh, entertainment and amusement services indoor, a variety of things of that nature. Uh, all some other things under the community facilities activities would be allowed, such as administrative services, community assembly, uh, small and medium, which would be like church gatherings, things like that. Uh, community education, cultural, recreational services, those type uses. Now the uses that wouldn't be permitted, we start getting into the heavier industrial type uses, uh, no industrial uses are allowed in a commercial services zone. Does that answer your question? A retail nursery. Now you're talking. Are you talking like a daycare? Like yes, yeah. I, I believe it would. Child care type facilities are classified as let's see, child care, family and group, personal and group care facilities. Those are allowed by right in that zone. Yes, just a regular child nursery. If that's what you're talking about. Okay. Well, that that's a good point. If that's what he was talking about, that would be allowed. But so would a retail nursery like trees and those kind of things would be. Veterinarian office services would be allowed. Yes, ma'am. That's allowed? It is allowed, okay. yes. Uh, and also, somebody asked about the cemetery. Is it full or not? I know because I live there. It is not full. And the reason for that is not because there's water up there. And it's the engineer. Anyway, um, first thing I did when I got my letter, first thing I did when I got my letter was I went out and got my tape measurer <laughs> and I measured how far it is from my house to this property. Now I bought this house, I have a lovely backyard with birds and bird baths and water features and quiet. This property is 38 feet and 6 inches from my house. So needless to say, <laughs> Um, and I understand too that there are properties down on uh, Las Casas or 96 uh, on the corners. They're, these are busy intersections and when they rezone that down there, I didn't have a problem with that because they need a service station on that road because it's busy. But this is not, it's not on 96. Um, and also, if we look at all the new development that they have done on Compton Road, they have, I don't know who you have, if you've been there, but th there is no commercial businesses there. They're all new, beautiful residential homes. Um, another thing that I thought about is once you open this up, this particular property, once you open this up, how can you tell, or you know, it, it's just going to be opened up for everybody. Um, 
how much time do I have? I gotta hurry. <laughs> um, also, it's my understanding that um, money can never be the reason for rezoning. It's for the best use of the land and the best for the community. And I'm sure you guys probably agree with that. Um, the change in this zoning is typical also of spot zoning. And I have a thing here that says the change in zoning is typical spot zoning contrary to Rutherford County's own zoning laws. So anyway, there are a few things here I want to read. If I run out of town, just time, just stop me. Uh, courts have defined spot zoning as the process of singling out a small parcel of land for use classification totally different, totally different from the surrounding area for the benefit of the owner and such property and to the detriment of other owners. To be considered a spot zone, the property in most cases must meet the following criteria. The spot zone allows use for, uses land, uses inconsistence with those allowed in the community. The spot zone would confer a special benefit on the individual property owner not commonly enjoyed by the owners of similar property. The existence of spot zones conflict with the policies in the text of the master plan. Um, there is no relation to, to the public health, safety, and welfare, and the zoning violates equal protection because it arbitrarily favors a single landowner. Um, the parcel in question is a small three-acre tract surrounded by other areas zoned for residential purposes containing a number of homes in an established neighborhood. The adjoining tracts of land are used as residents consistent with the residential zoning classification. Rezoning for commercial operations of any type would change the character of the neighborhood and cause undue harm to the owners of both contiguous and surround properties. Current residents purchase their homes with the understanding that the area would remain a residential neighborhood. And of course, I have to tell you that was, I considered, when I moved here, I considered other areas, but I just chose that one just because I wanted to live in the country. Sitting a commercial building in the vicinity of a residential neighborhood affects existing properties both economically and aesthetically and interrupts the peaceful enjoyment of homeowners. And there are other adequate number of parcels on Las Casas already zoned for commercial development. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? Yes. Hello. Hello. My name's Beth Wright. My name's Beth Wright, and I'm her neighbor. I live on Betty Ford Road, and I was alarmed to see the zoning change sign go up because we bought our house a couple of years ago with the understanding that that was going to stay a residential area. We just live a couple of lots down from Compton Road on Betty Ford Road, and I am very concerned about changing the zoning to a commercial zoning because that's going to affect all of us that live in that area. And I'm very concerned for this lady right here because this property backs up directly to hers. And when she bought her house, that house has been there probably a similar amount of time. It's residential. And so now you're proposing to flip that over to commercial and how is that going to affect her quality of life and how is that going to affect her property value and my property value? I'll tell you, I paid a lot of money for my house. And part of what drew me and what, why I paid a premium to live on Betty Ford Road is because of its beautiful, beautiful, beautiful residential peaceful area. And I can appreciate this man's dilemma. I can see why that would be difficult. But I don't think that it's right to rezone that to commercial when it's going to affect all of the rest of us that live in that area detrimentally. Anyone else? My name is David Puckett. My wife and I live at 1411 Compton Road. Our property goes up Sanford Drive. It's in an L shape. And then it fronts over on Betty Ford Road. 
which from the center of Betty Ford to the property that's in question tonight is roughly about 200 feet. So that's my location. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say I uh, appreciate the opportunity to speak to everyone tonight, and I'll try to make it very brief. Uh, my wife and I have lived at 1411 Compton Road. This October will be 46 years. This has always been a neighborhood to raise your kids in, quiet neighborhood. Everybody pretty well knows everybody. They know who comes and goes. And of course, when we moved there, Compton Road was a, about as wide as Betty Ford Road. Of course, they widened the road in 81. And of course, I don't have to tell you all uh, how much traffic's on there now. And my wife and I are concerned that put a place of business down there, it's going to create more traffic. And like the gentleman spoke a while ago in the long range plan, it is scheduled to widen out to five lanes, but who knows when that'll be. Uh, and this has always been a residential neighborhood. And it was residential when we moved there, and we would like to see it stay that way. Uh, we don't want to see it commercialized because once you, like the lady spoke a while ago, once you open it up to let one person commercialize his property, then how are you going to say no if I come along and say, well, my property on Betty Forward, I want to open it up commercial? Are you going to tell me no? I got five, you know. Uh, so you can't really tell me no if you say yes to him. Uh, so we would like to see it remain a residential neighborhood and not a mixed neighborhood because people that are buying into this neighborhood out there, they're buying into a residential neighborhood. The gentleman that sold his house right down Betty Ford Road last year, uh, kind of across the road from the lady that just spoke, his house bought $400,000. And it's not, you know, there's some real nice homes out there. So when you open it up to a mixed neighborhood, then uh, your property value is going to go down. And if someday one of my kids want to build a home over there on that property of Betty Ford, I don't want them to have to come out the end of their driveway and see a commercial piece of property across the street in front of them. Uh, so I sincerely hope tonight, whenever you uh, decide to vote on this, you'll vote to uh, keep it a neighborhood and not a, a you know, keep it residential and, and not mix it up. Anybody got any questions they want to ask me? I've lived out there long enough that when they had the old Betty Ford Bridge, Stones River got high enough that it went over that bridge. And uh, you can ask Jerry Compton about that. He's been flooded out more than once. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? Did you get that? Did you say that again? What's the last time? One, three, eight, nine, come to Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Simons. Simon, no S. My name's Ellen Simon and I live on Compton Road and I've been there for 17 years. My husband and I, when we moved here, we wanted a residential area. We wanted to be out in the country. If we wanted to be around commercial property, we would have moved in the into the city somewhere, not in the county. That's what the county is for, to be private to be by yourself, to be with your neighbors, not with a whole bunch of people driving up and down your road, try, knocking on your door saying, well, where's this farm uh, store? Or where's this automotive store? We don't want it. We want to keep our neighborhood the way it is. We know who comes. We know who goes. We know who belongs there. We don't need a bunch of strangers coming into our neighborhood and telling us what we can do and what we can't do. If you sell to one person, you can't tell somebody else, no, you cannot have a commercial property there. You've already done it. How are you going to um, justify telling somebody else if they want a commercial property? How are you going to tell them no? You can't. So everybody that lives out there that has a private home, that wants their peace and quiet, that wants to keep everything 
granted status quo, uh, it's not moving forward. Well, we would rather not move forward and keep it the way it is because it's nice, it's peaceful, it's quiet. We know what goes on. We know what, what people want. We don't want commercial property out there. Put it out on the main highway. Put it out on Las Casas. That's where the commercial property is, not in a family neighborhood. else. My name is Jason Loftus and I actually own 3426 Betty Ford Road, which is probably the property that it would affect mostly. And I'm sure everyone has personal opinions about it, but the common sense approach is I think Mike asked if there was some sinkholes and stuff on that property. There is, per Randy Jordan, I've only owned that property for about three years, but on the back side, which would be on the north side of that cemetery, there with the tree, there is a depression there that has over the years been filled constantly and cannot do any grave sites there. And it, of course, from a topical view, you really can't tell that, but as it follows to the property line of the subject being talked about, there's a cluster of trees there. That is really the bowl of that property. Uh, to the east side of that property there to the right corner of the screen and then to our property adjoining the cemetery that is the bottom of the bowl and um, obviously when they built the house back in 70 there they built it on one of the highest points the second highest points the right rear corner so one of my concerns would be that if whatever it would be zoned to there, there will be a water intrusion prob problem uh, we have water problems coming from that side and we also have water problems coming down Compton Road because of the ditch line. The county's been out there and redone some of the ditches, but all the water from the ditch comes off the cemetery and then crosses my property and it crosses Melba's property because it's the bowl. It doesn't go on down Betty Ford Road. It doesn't cross the high spot and go back towards the river. Obviously, elevations there so one can see that. So in any zoning changes, commercial or whatever, you put asphalt, you do that, you have, you're directing that specific water source and it's going to come back on my property. My son lives at that property. So uh, I've bought property before that sometimes I'm not sure what's going to be done with it, but I don't haul off and rezone it. Uh, I kind of have a little bit better idea. So um, I don't see the, the need to rezone that other than residential. Uh, they can split that property up, pay put two houses on it. I looked at that property when it was for sale the second day it came on the market. It was priced at 135000 I personally, the house, the gentleman obviously bought it, knows that the house wasn't worth anything, and I walked away from it. So I don't particularly know what he paid for it, but residential of individual can do much better from a residential standpoint than to redevelop it from a commercial standpoint. I don't really see the benefit of the surrounding homeowners, the community, or anything of that nature since there's not a specific use for the zoning of commercial. So, thanks. Anyone else? Seeing no one else rising to speak, I'll declare the public hearing closed. Commission. I'm uh, kind of concerned about a lack of specif uh, specificity with this uh, CS zoning. Uh, in an area that is predominantly residential and there are some very good um, commercial sites close by uh, granted but uh, you know this may be a bit premature for that area until you see a little bit more commercial growth down at the intersection working that way uh, I'm just not sure that I can support it unless somebody can can sway me otherwise Therefore, I'm going to make a motion to deny. Second. Second. To deny, to deny the rezoning request for item 17-A019. Other discussion? Just 
the benefit of the neighbors and the applicant, I, I do think it's important, at least for me as, <clears throat> as a planning commissioner, excuse me, to have a better idea of what's going in. I know once we rezone it, there's a multiple, you know, number of uses it can be used for, but I think it's incredibly hard to ask neighbors to be able to support speculative zoning. And so I think if he were to come back with a more specific plan, maybe something that, you know, the community could support, I don't think that this is a forever no. I do think Compton Road is a major road. It, we will probably see development, commercial development to this point at some point in the future. Um, but I completely support Jim's line of thinking that it, I just think it's premature. Comments. Ready to vote. We have a motion and a second to deny the request on item 17-A019, Glass Family Revocable Living Trust. All those that in favor of that motion to deny, please say aye. aye. Any opposition? The motion to deny carries. This will be scheduled for a public hearing, a final public hearing, before the Rutherford County Commission on Thursday, September the 14th, 6.30 p.m. in this courtroom. Thank you for your attendance and participation. Item 6A2, 17-A020, Orica. <coughs> USA by Julian Smith, I hope I pronounced that right, location 7265 Shelbyville Pike, Commission District is 6, County Commissioner is Joe Frank Jernigan, size of the site is approximately 232 acres, 4 and 1 half of those acres are requested to be rezoned, tax map 171, existing zoning is light industrial, proposed zoning is HI heavy industrial. Doug? Yes, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Uh, this is a uh, rezoning request that we don't get too terribly often, rezoning to heavy industrial. Uh, the applicant is proposing to rezone, as uh, Mr. Phillips stated, approximately four and a half acres of property that's already zoned for light industrial purposes to heavy industrial for explosive storage. Uh, there's a letter that's been submitted by the applicant, which I did include with the agenda packet, which explains the reasoning for choosing this proposed site. Uh, the applicant has also submitted other supporting documentation, which can be found on your iPads, and we also have some of those same photos on the big screen if we need to put them up there. According to the rezoning application, the site will be split into two separate areas. The first area will have two structures, a magazine that will house the material in a secure building. The other will be tanks that hold materials to be distributed into trucks for delivery to job sites, which is essentially what this is used for, is the, for explosives for uh, developing uh, subdivisions and whatnot, as I understand it. Uh, the second area will contain no greater than four tractor trailers that will provide secure storage for the explosive agents. Uh, the Department of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, AT have minimum distances which these materials must be from each other as well as from the nearest road or houses which is one, one of the main reasons the applicant chose this site to begin with. Uh, there's also barricades that are required as well. Access to the property would be directly from Shelbyville Pike. The property does back up to uh, Christiana Fosterville Road. However, there will be no access there. Of course, the railroad backs up to the, the tracks or to the, uh, the property there right near the road. So uh, there will be no access onto Christiana Fosterville Road. Uh, the applicants proposing to utilize the existing access for 7265 Shelbyville Pike, which is the larger uh, access is the larger part of the property, and not the existing drive to the north, which accesses a cellular tower, which is is located on the property as well. Uh, any improvements to the access and proposed parking areas would need to be shown on the site plan. Of course, site plan would be required for this and be built to county standards. Uh, heavy industrially zoned properties are required to install a type three buffer adjacent to a residentially zoned property. Uh, the landscape plan, again, will be required along with the site plan. As you can see from the aerial photos, uh, this is a very, very heavily treed site. Uh, actually, the limits of the uh, light industrial zoning, as you see on the map, are not the limits of the property. Uh, the property goes further to the north uh, and is zoned residential low density. Uh, so quite frankly, a lot of the existing material on the site is going to remain undisturbed disturbed and would act as a very substantial buffer to the property and to the use in question. Uh, performance standards uh, specifically address this kind of materials as well. Uh, specifically, the zoning ordinance states, and this is directly out of the ordinance, the use and or storage of any toxic, 
detonable or explosive materials and any fire hazard solids, liquids, or gases shall be uh, in strict accordance with current NFPA code as adopted by the county. Adequate precautions shall be taken to protect against any negative offsite impacts or any uh, has of any hazardous or toxic materials release using best available technology. Any such release shall be a violation of this ordinance punishable by and as provided by law. Uh, we also, uh, when we go over our zoning requests, uh, we have the uh, fire chief in attendance at these meetings. Uh, I conversed with him via email. He wasn't able to make it here tonight. But uh, when I uh, inquired to him about if he had anything he wanted me to relay to the commission tonight, he stated that the only thing that fire needs is a 20-foot wide driveway back to the site. He said this is a highly regulated use by ATF and it will have to be built according to their specifications. The fire code calls for setbacks from roads and highways. This is out in the middle of the woods, so we don't, see a pro we don't foresee a problem with that. So uh, he has been uh, contacted, the fire chief has been contacted and has uh, kind of put his two cents in here for this application as well. Uh, again, one of the reasons the applicant chose this subject property is the lack of surrounding structures. You can see from some of the documents that were uh, submitted with the applicant's materials, they're about a half a mile from the nearest structure. Uh, some uses due to their nature are just better separated from more densely populated areas. Uh, we have consulted with the county's fire chief. We just gave that report. Uh, considering all these factors, staff feels that the proposed site already being zoned for industrial purposes is probably more appropriate than other areas in the county that could be found. Uh, the applicant has also advised that all federal, state, and local standards and ordinances will also have to be followed should this application be approved. Uh, with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions. And there, uh, the applicant is present uh, that can answer questions. Excuse me, answer any questions as well. Questions for staff? This is right next to, to the, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the rock there. Uh, so, yeah, it's basically what it is. He has uh, been out doing that for quite, for quite some time. And he's gotten permission to do it, so it's that was something that was done under the, uh, the old zoning resolution. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Questions for staff at this time. Do we currently have a place in the county where we store explosive explosives like this? Not that I'm aware of, and I have not dealt with one since I've been here. I have friends in the excavating business that used to keep their license up. This stuff is so heavily regulated now that they he has given up his, he had a half inch steel container with half inch thick walls on it that he had to store it in. It's very, very heavily regulated. And I think anything that would satisfy ATF would probably satisfy us or more more, more than satisfy us. I don't, I don't know yet. Other questions for staff? Not. I'll declare the public hearing open for item 17-A020, Orica, USA. Anyone wishing to speak, please come forward. Seeing no one, I'll declare the public hearing closed. Commissioners. This piece of property, we talk about piece of property being landlocked. Well, this piece of property is tree locked. And it's a great location for this. I'll make a motion to approve it. Motion and a second to approve with all staff comments. Any other discussion? The applicant present? Okay. No, I thought you were. I'm sorry. The applicant is present. Yeah. Doug, I, I have a, a simple question. How does this, these distances affect, it, are there any neighboring properties in close enough proximity that this is going to restrict their uh, future ability to build a home or anything? Like from that? our standpoint, from the county zoning standpoint, no. Uh, there's no regulation. Now, I'm not, I can't say that as far as ATF is concerned, but as far as anything from the ordinance, if somebody else were as in this area wanted to uh, develop their property in a manner, I mean, we would just make the mention that, yes, this is an approved use for this property, but uh, as far as any specific uh, distance criteria in our zoning ordinance, no, there's no, there's no effect there. 
applicant uh, to make a presentation or to answer some questions. Is, is it Mr. Smith? Are you, are you here? Yes. Would you please come forward? This, this will all be GRC, Doug, either one of you. This will all be label rock outcrop for several feet around it, I, I would assume, right? I believe you're correct, but Mike's going to pull up his uh, layer here. Yeah. Yes. It's all, yeah, yes, sir, Mr. Vaughn, it, it is pretty much all Bladeville Rock. To address your question, uh, any property that would be sold in the future around this or, you know, within a thousand foot of that would simply restrict what we could do. So the proposal of the amount we would store currently is just based upon the ownership of the land and the houses and things around it. So if somebody were to build a house closer that was on another person's property or their property, then, then it would affect us in a downward manner and we would have to adjust the amount that we would store or could store based upon that. So this is just, it's not a permanent thing that guarantees you that says this is what you can store forever and ever. Storage. No explosions are expected. And so it's a distribution. So, so I, I work for Worker USA. It's it's the world's largest explosive company. We're an Australian public firm, and we operate 60 or so storage facilities like this east of St. Louis to service quarry and construction market. Our nearest one to here, we have one in the Goodlettsville, Millersville area. And uh, actually one reason that we chose to do this area is because of the recent expansion and the growth spurt, if you will, to really to lessen the amount of miles that we travel on the road carrying product, which we feel is probably the most dangerous thing that we do every day. Uh, we're already servicing this area on a regular basis, uh, bringing it down on vehicles and uh, we're just uh, trying to operate a little more efficiently, add jobs to the area, become a good company member of the community. And uh, this is a very remote area. Uh, actually, one of our customers uh, operating a borrow pit on the area is utilizing explosives, uh, such as uh, this gentleman said here, the, the BATFE storage requirements along with MSHA and OSHA and every other uh, agency that regulates us is extremely we're an extremely highly regulated industry. Uh, the facilities that we have to store certain types of this in are just about bulletproof and, and unbreakable. It's a quarter inch steel, uh, hooded padlocks where they can't be cut. Uh, it strictly says the minimum distance, not just from houses and roads based on the amount we store, but also from each particular type of product. Uh, sometimes we even have to barricade within a facility between one product to the other. And how many employees will you have on site? I, I mean, it, again, it's a distribution point, so it's an in and out type thing. Uh, we're going to, we'll make that decision in the future as far as balancing our workload that from Goodlettsville that would service whatever part of the city. Uh, you know, and based upon future <laughs> current business growth. Uh, we have 23 employees at our Goodlessville site right now. Uh, you know, I can envision from very early in the game, half of those operating out of this area. Do you have any way to predict how many trucks you'll have in and out daily? Uh, as, as far as ours in and out, uh, probably about two tractor trailer loads a week of inbound freight uh, and our trucks you know with the 10 employees would be probably four uh, box fan type vehicles you know not tractor trailers uh, much like a f750 type box fan like a mini ups if you will you know dropping three or four different deliveries a day this all for y'all, your company's use, or do you distribute to smaller? Uh, but we distribute. I mean, that, that's what we do. We distribute it, but but we take it out, and just like I think somebody said, the uh, uh, the regulations have have forced people that can't comply with them to give them up, and or they've chosen to give them up and and turn it over to uh, what we're supposed to do as a living and the experts in. So. 
a lot of the market, we take it out, we drop it off, they use what they use that day, and we come back around and pick it up and return it to, the, to a secure location. Versus, uh, I think there was a question up here, I'm sure there's, there is storage overnight somewhere in your county in a small three by three or four by four type box uh, because it is allowed and uh, you know obviously the smaller quantities could be much closer. You can be within a couple hundred feet of a house with some things if it's in a smaller quantity. So I'm sure there's... There are regulations to keep those small quantities uh, a certain distance off property lines and all that. From, from a house, yes, yes. Yeah, the storage is very strictly... Yeah, it's very strictly, uh, uh, it's very strict as far as, uh, or specific as far as the amount you store distance to nearest roads, passenger railways, and inhabited buildings. Describe the, the actual safety of storage. What's the security going to be for the property? Uh, it's a we we don't by law we don't have to fence or have a secure security guard. Uh, some states require a uh, kind of a uh, GPS type, uh, I guess, device placed on magazines for entry and exit. Uh, we have uh, proposed to potentially fence the area. You know, we, we uh, discussed some of the zoning regulations previously with. Uh, the, the barbed wire fence, which I know applies more to the cattle type storage and things like that, which we did fence it. It's typically a six or seven foot high with the three strands of inward facing barbed wire, but you know it goes against the zoning ordinance. But uh, yes, yes, yes. But at this point, it's uh, the the facility, the the buildings. They're really not buildings, but the things themselves require even a, a certain type of shackle padlock, uh, 7 sixteenths diameter that can't be cut. So it's uh, the security basically is within the facility itself. But we potentially could fence it. Have you ever had any kind of a breach? Uh, sure. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it happens sometimes. Yeah. Hasn't happened our Goodlitzville site, but you know, you watch the news that you know a thief uh, a thief can try anything. Normally, what we have, if we have any type of issue, or in our industry, when I say we, not just Orca, but within our industry, is an employee theft. But our inventory regulations are also uh, obviously down to the to the ounce and the piece, and we can be spot checked any time by the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms. Are you, are you penalized by them or fined by them if you have a breach? Uh, they don't have finding privilege. They pull your license and put you out of business. Yep. Beth, is any of this uh, material liquid in a liquid form? Uh, in the one round bin, I don't know if you uh, have a picture there, but... Silo? Yeah, yeah, we, uh, uh, in the one, it's, it's ammonium nitrate, it's an industrial grade ammonium nitrate just like a farmer would have, you know, out and then standing next to it is a, it's an emulsion, so it's a semi-liquid, but those two products are not actually explosives. You could stand them out here across the street and, and not be regulated. Uh, not on those, no. But it is a hazardous material. It's an oxidizer, not an explosive. Yep. But we are regulated by the EPA. Um, Doug, this is this is going to be way out in right field, but uh, I'm going to state it anyway. Yes. For a what? Adult entertainment. <laughs> okay. Well, I invite any of you to go on Orca's website and, and see what we do. And well, let's just say times, were, times got tough, and out of your four and a half acres, you wanted to. Well, what I can, uh, actually, I, can, I think I can kind of assuage some of your concerns here. Let me just, uh, that thought occurred to me as well. So. Uh, <laughs> we do hire female employees if they <laughs> want to go to work for us. As far as adult entertainment uh, type uses are concerned, 
uh, yes, heavy industrial is one of the uses that is allowed in that zone. However, one of the requirements, the distance requirements for uh, adult entertainment is that no adult entertainment activity shall be located within 1,000 feet of a residentially or institutionally zoned district. It's zoned surrounded by RL. So that would automatically disqualify this site from that type of a use. So there's no reason to even worry about it at that point. <laughs> I just my, one my hotel <laughs> name, right? Yeah. I had just one more question, and it's um, let's say there were some sort of an accident that happened on site. Should we be more concerned about hazardous materials like you just described, or would it be more? you know, an explosion, would there be fire prevention, things we need to be concerned about? Yeah, I mean, the, the first thing we do, and we, we haven't did it yet because we hadn't reached the point, but the first thing we do is reach out to local fire, police, emergency responders, and we have very specific uh, programs that, and signage, this will be an incredibly signed property that blue, uh, orange, and yellow zone on where to fight fires, where not to fight fires. We do local training. Uh, with most of those type of people uh, purposely uh, so it uh, and again one of the reasons that the distances are specified by the BATFE is to protect from that but well, I, I like just, no, I'm sorry no, I was just gonna say I like the fact that it's a hidden area it's an ideal area but uh, back to the security and the access, uh, the signs that are required for you, are, and this may all be site plan questions, but are they required at the major highway or would they be more localized to that site? Because, uh, you know, it's one of those things you don't really want to bring attention to, but where are you kind of required? To would would the what be at the local highway? Signage or, or that uh, signage you're talking we, about? We, the, the signage we would have at the local highway would just be our name on a sign it's directly going to, to the draw site. Attention. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, this is, this is well within the property boundary of of the 270, 270 acres, I think the whole property. Yeah, it's, it's almost in the middle, if you will, of yeah. 270. Yeah. Nestled between two hills, it looks like. It looks yep. like an ideal yep. location. Yeah, the only signage on the road would be a, uh, whatever the regulation would say, but a four by six type sign with our name on it with an arrow. And just, uh, I know at the site plan stage we'll deal with this too, but that does require a heavier access road through there as well, Doug, I guess. I mean, the road would have to be able to, to meet our county requirements, right. yes. And uh, again, the county fire chief, you know, the road would have to be able to handle. You said uh, what, 20 fire, feet? Yeah, fire traffic. Right. So a fire, right. fire engine. So I'd have to be able to, to do that. Okay. Did you have something? Well, I was just going to say. That uh, they couldn't have picked a better spot. I mean, it's near the base of a ridge line. It's uh, in a remote area. You've got a, a, a quarry on the one side and a ridge on the other side. It's it's a couple thousand feet from any house. So I mean, it's it's a pretty good spot. And and we're limited what we're proposing. I mean, we we can't expand and add storage because of the regulations. It's it's in place unless unless the property owner were to buy property around him. For the volume of product you're proposing to store there, you're at the distances you need right now. The what the half yeah, mile. So yeah, that's the right maximum. That, that's, that's the maximum right. we could store based on the situation that exists. Any other questions for Mr. Smith? Thank you. I apologize, commissioners, for not bringing him up here earlier. I had the impression that he wasn't here, but thank you. I think we have a motion and a second to approve. Any other questions? As I said, we have a motion and a second to approve item 17-A020, Orica USA. All those in favor of that motion to approve, please say aye. Opposition? Motion to approve carries. Thank you. 6-3, item 17 dash, I will go ahead and say, uh, Mr. Smith, that this will also come before the full county commission on September 14th, 6.30 p.m., right here in this courthouse. 6-A-3, uh, item 17 dash A021, Melinda uh, Tantum, I believe it. 
Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, location 2415 Blackman Road, Commission District 20, the County Commissioner is Trey Gooch. Size of the site is approximately one acre. Tax map 78, existing zoning is RM, residential medium density. Proposed zoning is CS for commercial services. Doug. Yes, sir, thank you. Uh, the applicant, as you stated, is proposing to zone the subject property to commercial services. Uh, to my knowledge, the applicant doesn't have any specific plans for the property at this time, and no concept plan was submitted as part of this application. So it does appear to be for speculative purposes. Uh, there are other non-residentially zoned properties located directly across the street from the subject property, as you can see on your iPads, as well as the map on the screen. Uh, a special exception for an automated restoration business was approved for property at 2400 Blackman Road back in 2015 right across the street. Uh, staff has also included a Murfreesboro City zoning map as part of your agenda packets uh, for this area which does show commercial zoning across Interstate 840 and park zoning uh, adjacent to the subject property. Uh, that property that's uh, surrounding the subject site is zoned park. That's going to be the location of the new West Side Park uh, inside the city of Murfreesboro. So that property is within the uh, city limits. My understanding is the city did try to purchase this property, but negotiations, they weren't able to come to any kind of an agreement. So at this point, uh, it still remains the, uh, the applicant's property. Uh, access to the property is and will continue to be from Blackman Road. Uh, any improvements to the access or parking areas will need to be shown on a site plan that would be done. Uh, in addition, uh, right of way along the subject property is within the city limits of Murfreesboro. Uh, any work in the right of way of Blackman Road must be approved by the city engineer. Uh, we did contact the uh, city regarding this request being that it is surrounded by the, uh, the park property, proposed park property. Uh, you'll notice in the staff report several comments that the city staff had made uh, regarding uh, any improvements to the area, traffic studies, things like that. Uh, landscaping, commercially zoned properties, uh, especially CS, would be required to install a type two buffer uh, adjacent to any residentially zoned property. Uh, although the surrounding property again is located within the city limits of Murfreesboro and zoned for park, uh, staff would still anticipate a type two buffer uh, should this property be developed uh, separately from that. Uh, again, a landscape plan would have to be submitted with that site plan. Uh, performance standards would also apply to this property. Uh, this is located within the general urban character area Area. Again, it does contemplate non-residential type uses. Uh, Blackman Road is identified as an urban arterial in the county's comprehensive plan. Uh, with the development of the West Side Park, uh, traffic will likely increase in this area. Uh, there is also surrounding zoning consistent with what the applicant is asking for. Uh, we're comfortable with this request for either commercial services or if you felt more comfortable with commercial neighborhood being that that's the predominant zoning in the area from the county standpoint, uh, I think we'd be comfortable with that as well. But uh, with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions and the applicant is present. Any questions for staff before we conduct our public hearing? If not, I'll declare the public hearing open for item 17-A021. Is the applicant here and would you please come forward? Name and address, please. Mindy, thank you. If you would kind of uh, give us an uh, overview of what you have planned for this property. Yeah, so um, I've owned the property since 1995. And um, of course, a lot of happened in that area to that property. Um, my neighbors across the street, of course, have theirs commercial. Um, uh, the, the places on the side um, of uh, the T there at Burton Knob, Manson Pike, um, and at Blackman Road there, um, that's commercial right now as well. Um, we wanted to have it commercial um, under consideration um, of maybe having something um, as somewhere to um, eat, um, something, you know, uh, that we could maybe do in the future. And so um, with all of the, the planning with the park and everything, um, 
we thought that that would be a good area as well. Um, maybe sometime in the future, we didn't have any immediate plans for it today. Um, the property has been a rental property for us since 2009. And so we uh, currently uh, rent the property and, and have good renters in there. Um, We're uh, seeking just that commercial zoning um, again uh, for future for future use, and so um, that's why we didn't put a plan with the property today. Do you have any questions, Mr. Stranum? Do you have any plan? You don't have any plans at this point to do anything yourself. If you do anything, it would be something you would probably sell, or you just still up in there to be sure what you're doing. We really just wanted to leave our options open. Um, so me and my husband have four girls, and um, they're all grown. And so um, you know, we thought. I mean, we've sat around the table at night and talked about you know all kinds of different things that you know that we could do. Um, with the park there and everything, I mean, um, it's going to be 21 baseball fields, so, you know, there's all kinds of different things that uh, people, we could make use of that for and uh, to help even the community there, so, um, but to answer your question, we don't have any um, substantial plans today. Other questions for the applicant? Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak for or against this rezoning request? Seeing no one, I'll declare the public hearing closed. Commissioners? Chairman, Doug, did the city uh, agree that our buffering would be good for the park? It, uh, I'm sorry, did they agree that, the, can you say that again? I didn't quite hear what they you said. Did they agree that our requirements for buffering around this property as commercial would be sufficient for the park? Well, I mean, unfortunately it is what it is. I mean, even if they don't like it, I can't make them do more than what the ordinance would require. Uh, to, but to more specifically answer your question, they didn't really indicate one way or the other as far as that goes. They didn't really express any kind of uh, major concerns beyond that which I included in your agenda packets as far as some of the requirements and different things that they would probably look at as far as dedication of right-of-way traffic studies, intersection improvements at uh, Blackman, Burt Knob, and uh, Manson Pike possibly. But uh, yeah, but since the right-of-way is in the city, it, it makes it a little more difficult uh, it, as far as, I say difficult, it's really not the right word, but it's uh, not just the county they'd be dealing with, it'd be the city as well for that. Refresh me if the city's CH zoning, is it more closely related to the CN that's there or our CS? Commercial highway is actually more closely related to our commercial general. It's the more the wide, more wide open commercial zone. I'd make a motion to approve with staff comments. I have a motion and a second to approve item 17-A021, Melinda Trantham. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? All those in favor of that motion to approve, please say aye. Opposition? Uh, would you please call the roll? Rhonda Allen? Yeah. Jim Averwater? Yes. Lee Bogle? Yes. David Jones? Yes. Mike Cush? No. Craig Lynch? Yes. Chip Pinion? Yes. Charlotte P? Yes. Mike Bott? Yes. Jeff Phillips? Aye. Eight. Yes, two no. Motion uh, to approve carries. Thank you. 
Item 684-17-A022, Matt Bratton, location 4513 Sulphur Springs Road, Commission District 3, the County Commissioner is Will Jordan. Size of the site is approximately four acres, tax map 48. Existing zoning is RM, residential medium density. Proposed zoning is commercial services CS. Doug. Yes, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Uh, the applicant, as you stated, is proposing to zone the proposed properties to commercial services. Uh, the applicant has no specific plans for the property at this time and no concept plan was submitted along with the application. Uh, that being said, the applicant has indicated possible use as either a convenience market or possibly a storage facility. Uh, the closest non-residential non excuse me, zone property is located approximately 900 feet to the east where there's an existing Dollar General store. Uh, staff has fielded a number of phone calls and had several meetings regarding property around this I-840 interchange with Sulphur Springs Road, but to date, nothing has really come of any of those particular applications. Uh, access to this property will be from Sulphur Springs Road via, via uh, existing frontage roads. Those frontage roads are actually county roads uh, and are listed in the county road book as frontage roads. Uh, staff will require, if this is approved, a traffic study for any development proposed for this property, considering its proximity to the interchange and potential turning movements issues during at those frontage roads. Uh, staff will also require testing to be done on those roads to determine the ability to, uh, to accommodate increased traffic. Uh, something else I wanted to bring to uh, your attention is, uh, Mike, if you could bring up that. Um, when we uh, first were uh, looking at this, uh, we became aware that the uh, property was impacted by a TVA easement. Uh, there is a map that I included with your agenda packets that does show that. This shows it a little more clearly. But you can see the three properties right there and how that easement goes right through. The line is not there, but the easement is. So it's, you know, who knows if there will ever be a line there. Probably not, but TVA is not one to, to get rid of their easements. So that's going to have a substantial impact on the development of the property. The applicant was aware that there was an easement there, uh, and I contacted him about this. He already was aware that it was present. So uh, I just wanted to bring that to your attention as well. Uh, landscaping, this would require a type 2 buffer. Uh, adjacent to any residentially zoned properties, and of course, performance standards uh, would also have to be met. Uh, this property is also located within the general urban character area, again, which does contemplate these type of uses. Sulphur Springs Road is identified as an urban arterial in the county's comprehensive plan, which will eventually be widened to uh, a five-lane cross-section at some point in the future. Being this close to the interchange, staff is doubtful that this property will ever develop beyond what it already is, just a single-family home, if we're ever going to de develop or redevelop it would probably be something non-residentially. Uh, that being said, uh, you can see in our staff comments that we did have concerns regarding that TVA easement, uh, speci really specifically that it's just going to have an impact on the development. It's not that it, development's impossible, but it's going to restrict what can be placed on that property and how it's actually located on the property. Uh, and traffic, as stated earlier, uh, the frontage roads were constructed by TDOT during the construction of then State Route 840, now interstate. Uh, determination will need to be made on the thickness of those roads and their ability to accommodate increased traffic. And again, traffic study. We want to see that as well due to the turning movements uh, back toward the interstate. Uh, from a land use standpoint, uh, we feel this is an appropriate request and would recommend approval, but we do acknowledge that there are issues that are going to impact the overall development of the site. Uh, with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. That easement, Doug, uh, going through all of that property, commercial services may be better than the residential use for that piece of property. Right. I mean, you can put things like parking areas and things like that under TVA easements, not so much buildings and things. Anyone have questions for staff? Doug, do they, do they have actually road frontage on Suffer Springs Road they can use, or do they have to access the unnamed it, street? It's a little frontage road. You can see that uh, the map that uh, Mike has up there. There's a small frontage road right there which actually accesses the property. They don't have direct access to Sulphur Springs Road, but then they have the frontage road J, which is uh, kind of goes north and south, and K, which is the one that really fronts. The, that's actually really more just a driveway is what that is, but it, they are maintained in the road book. Other questions for staff? Ready for our public hearing? This time I'll declare a public hearing open for item 17-A022 for Matt Bratton, 
Is the applicant present? Would you come forward, please? Name and address. My name is Matt Bratton. I live at 1601 Flat Rock Road. Uh, I guess this is speculative. This is three different properties. My in-laws own two. I recently acquired one. Uh, it's just, I think it's kind of inevitable this area is going to go to some kind of business type use. And this is going to make up a, hopefully, we're trying to sell the property. That's what we're doing. Uh, and hopefully this will make up a portion of my in-laws retirement. Any questions? Thank you, Mr. Bratton. Thank you. Anyone present wishing to speak for or against this rezoning request? Seeing no one, I'll declare the public hearing closed. Commissioners? Doug, is the, is the frontage road private or public? Property? It's public. It is public? Yes, sir. Okay. Make a motion to approve, subject to all staff comments. Motion and a second to approve. Item 17-A022 for Matt Bratton. Other questions? All those in favor of that motion to approve, please say aye. Opposition? No. Motion to approve carries. Would you please note one opposition? Item 6517-A023, Thoroughbred Construction uh, by Steve Knox, location 4663 Epps Mill Road, Commission District is 6, County Commissioner is Joe Frank Jernigan. Size of the site is approximately 100 acres and approximately three of those will be rezoned. Tax map 157, existing zoning is RM, residential medium density. Proposed zoning is a PUD, planned unit development, and a PUD amendment. Doug. Yes, sir. Thank you. And I'll explain those uh, as we go along here why it's an amendment as well. Uh, as you'll recall, this, this property should look fairly familiar. Uh, Beard Estates was approved as a PUD, Plan Unit Development, at the Board of Commissioners April 13, 2017 meeting. Uh, one of the conditions of the PUD approval was that a temporary emergency ingress-egress be established along with the access to Dunbar Lane, because if you recall, Dunbar Lane was the only public road that actually had frontage on that property. It kind of stubbed out into the property. So one of the conditions, again, was a, a temporary access uh, along with that access to Dunbar Lane with a permanent secondary access to be established after 80 lots uh, under discretion of the fire chief. Uh, since that application was approved, the applicant has been seeking a solution to the temporary access uh, situation. Uh, the applicant approached the neighboring property owner about establishing that temporary emergency ingress egress point. Uh, the property owner was only willing to allow the applicant to pursue a permanent access, but not a temporary one. So the applicant's asking for the following. First, they want to rezone that 2.9 acres from RM to PUD to add an additional 14 lots to the overall PUD of Beard Estates. Also, they'd like to amend the condition of the temporary access and add the proposed secondary access, which would be a permanent access, as part of phase two of the Beard Estates development. And that's consistent with what they're showing in the revised pattern book. That pattern book is included on your uh, iPads tonight. Uh, the pattern book explains the development in greater detail. The, the additional 14 lots are proposed to be developed identically to the proposed, uh, to the approved, excuse me, uh, PUD of Beard Estates. Uh, the revised pattern book would call for 181 lots, uh, which are, again is approximately four units to the acre. Uh, home sizes, everything else along with that was uh, similar or identical really to uh, what was approved under the uh, original plan development. Uh, homes, again, would have a minimum of 10% masonry on their frontage with all remaining areas being uh, having vinyl siding. Uh, there'd be four phases to this plan. Phase, each one would be about 40 homes per year depending on market demand, but that permanent access, that secondary one would be shown in phase two. 
So it would be kind of after the, the 40 lot mark is what that permanent access would be in. Uh, again, that uh, pattern book is included with your uh, agenda packets and on your iPads. Uh, does not have property, does not have direct access to Epps Mill Road. Uh, they only have access through the Buchanan Estate subdivision. That was a, a point of uh, much discussion during the uh, original public hearings for this. Uh, the first access point would be, again, Dunbar Lane in phase one and then Pinion Street where it dead ends would be the phase two when it was developed. Uh, you see again that the, ap the applicant's concept plan does show proposed connections to adjacent property along the other sides as well and as development occurs uh, staff would anticipate those connections being opened as well. Uh, the traffic study, which had was submitted just as uh, kind of a refresher for you, found that all the tra traffic volumes, even after development, development would still be within level of service A or B uh, uh, with this uh, development. That was from the original Beard Estates. Uh, buffering would not be required. The original PUD pattern book did show the preservation of an existing tree line on the north side of this development. Uh, staff would expect this buffer to extend to these properties. It didn't necessarily call that out, but we would expect that to be the case as well, and no other buffers are identified. Uh, most of the comments, as you recall, we did receive at the original public hearings for this development were in regards to the access to the property, as they only had that one access to Buchanan Estates via Dunbar Lane. Uh, this request does eliminate the temporary access requirement if the request is approved, but they do feel, and staff feels as well, that the permanent access after the first 40 lots is a reasonable compromise. So uh, with that, uh, we'd be happy to answer any questions, and the applicant is present. Questions for staff? Oh, <clears throat> long term, this will actually be an improvement, correct, Doug? I mean, it'll give more paid Well, it's a more formal more access. access. It, right, it's a formal access point as opposed to just a temporary access point. I think the, the concern, because uh, I spoke to the property owner uh, before she had uh, actually given her consent to have him rezone this property but uh, her concern was she didn't want to see just a temporary access there where it wasn't really monitored real well or anything like that if you actually have homes on it then you have kind of eyes on the street kind of a thing other questions for staff ready for our public hearing this time I'll declare the public hearing open for item 17-A023, Thoroughbred Construction. Is the applicant available in here? Hello? State your name, please. Steve Knox, 1411 Buckingham Drive. I am the person that's looking to develop this property. Uh, like Doug said and stuff, I worked very hard off of your comments and stuff to try to get a secondary permanent entrance, and I was able to do that. But again, she won't let me do a temporary. It's in the contract that way. So I'm asking, based on what he said, if you rezone this 2.93 acres that you allow me to do two phases and put the per uh, secondary permanent interest in the second phase. And I'll answer any questions if you have it. Questions for Mr. Knox? Thank you. Anyone else here wishing to speak for or against this rezoning request? My name is Robert Shaw. I live on the corner of Sellers Court and Rankin Drive. Uh, Rankin Drive is becoming a speedway, and one of our concerns is the access roads that you're going to have. You already stated that, according to the map, you wanted to come in on Pinion. Well, there's also going to be eventually homes built on the parcel in question of that 100 acres. Is that correct? I can actually answer that question. Uh, at, 
right now that property is zoned for residential purposes. It's zoned a residential medium density. Could that happen in the future? It could, yes. Now that's not what the gentleman is, the, the applicant's proposing. The only thing he wants to do is zone that small 2.9 acre corner in the northwest corner of the property. So the reigning property is not part of this and if that ever comes in for development, we would just have to kind of see where that would, uh, where that would lead from there. Well, one of our concerns is that the access of Darcy Lane, Sellers Court, Pinion, and Dunbar is going to increase a greater volume of traffic in there. And I understand that. Now, I will say that the fact that those streets do stub out uh, would say to me that in the future they may extend into that property. Now, at this point, it's hard to say because we have no development plan moving forward on that. So. Right now, it's going to just going to be business as usual as far as the uh, as far as the development of the property. There's just there's nothing for us to look at right now. Okay. I understand I understand your concern as far as the possibility of traffic moving in and out of there, but there are ways to uh, if we were to see a master plan for that remaining 97 acres, there are ways to still extend those streets into the property, but at the same time do it in such a way that we're not encouraging. Uh, cut through traffic. We do like, from a planning perspective, we do like to see interconnectivity. But uh, again, right now it's all speculative because we don't, we just don't know what's going to happen with it. When I spoke with the applicant or the uh, the owner of the property, uh, she didn't mention any other plans to develop this property at this point. Okay. So that would be the only access is Pinion and Dunbar. Correct for this development that Mr. Knox is talking about. Those are his two access points. That is correct. All right. And the homes in question that are going to be built. Can you give me any indication what the prices are going to be? One fifty and above. One eighty and above. All right. All right. And it'll be the same standard house that's built in Buchanan Estates. I can't hear him. I think you said size-wise, yes, but I, I'm. I'm kind of guessing. Is that what you said, Steve? Besides what? Yeah, he's nodding yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? Seeing no one, I'll declare the public hearing closed. Commissioners? Mr. Chairman. I would like to make a motion to approve the rezoning into a PUD for the permanent road access uh, that we discussed in the earlier meetings. I think this would satisfy uh, what we were after um, and correct the situation with the one road. Motion to approve and a second. Other questions? I just wanted to commend the developer and owners for doing what they've, uh, they've exceeded our request for that second access and provided something more permanent that I think will last a lot longer. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Comment. Any other questions? We have a motion and a second to approve item 17-A023, thoroughbred construction. All those in favor of that motion to approve, please say aye. aye. Any opposition? The motion to approve carries, thank you. Staff reports or other business, Doug? Uh, I don't have anything. Mike, did you have yes, anything? Sir. No, we're good. Anyone? Good meeting. Thank you for your attendance and your participation. We are adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>